Here's the 7 best things to do and see in Florence. Today I will tell you about a city known as the birthplace of the Renaissance. It was the home of the Michelangelo and Donatello, very talented and skilled artists. Again, Florence is famous also for Catherine de' Medici. She was a French-Italian daughter to Lorenzo II de' Medici. She was recognized for being unforgivably ruthless and considered the most powerful woman in 16th century in Europe. What is close to my heart is that one of the greatest artists of all times, sculptor, architect, engineer and genius, Leonardo da Vinci. My room was located in the center of Florence, which was very uh, practical. I must admit that the rentals are no low cost. Also, what I wanted some Italian style, and the room remind me of the writer's room, the one that I rented. Quite inspiring, but straightforward. A simple, clean bed and a painting poster by the Austrian painter Gustav Klimt. Of course, the old building is the one that inspires the most. The first day I walked so much that I couldn't feel my legs anymore. I walked from Piazza San Lorenzo, I passed Piazza del Duomo and made a semicircle and passed Palazzo Gondi, um, the Uffizi Gallery and uh, straight to the Palazzo Vecchia. Um, I finally sat down to eat something and the view is amazing, the dinner in front of a vast palace illuminated by light as from a fairy tale. I didn't even notice the fatigue, I just wanted to walk the streets where Leonardo da Vinci, the Medici family and Michelangelo family members walked. I have to admit that it was not on my mind at first to visit museums or galleries and other sites. I just wanted to walk, dream and enjoy that fairy tale atmosphere. In the meantime, I noticed I have several days alone be without friends and family and I, I do not mind and I don't feel alone, kind of. Sometimes I like to exchange thoughts with someone, but I also enjoy silence and daydreaming. I adore daydreaming, although I have never shared my dreams with others. I can to return to some more interesting facts relating to Florence. I don't know if you know, but Julius Caesar um, founded the city and turned it into a settlement of the Roman army. At that time, the architecture was more like a military camp than an ordinary city. And later on, when Florence became a mighty, uh, large cathedral. Later, when Florence became a mighty municipality, a um, large cathedral began to be built, and one of the cathedrals is known to have taken 140 years to make. I'm really amazed by that fact. And this is the seven best attractions to see in Florence, if you ask me. First one is Duomo, a cathedral of Santa Maria del Flore. I'm happy to visit both day and night, a magical building with phenomenal architecture. Second one is Uffizi Gallery. Um, I would recommend to book tickets so you don't have to wait in line for two hours in front of the museum. Third would be Giotto Campanile, 
Uh, it's a Florence Cathedral bell tower. The tower stands is about 85 meters tall. They made this tower making a combination of green, white and pink marble in gothic style. And the fort would be the VQ bridge. That was the first bridge built for self defense and it was built in 1345. The fifth would be Pitti Palace uh, or Palazzo Pitti, uh, the Renaissance palace brought by the Medici family in 1549 and it became the residence of the ruling families of Toscany. The sixth would be Boboli Baste, original design for the Medici family, one of the first gardens to serve as inspiration. And the seven Piazza della Signoria, my favorite one, famous for Bartolomeo Amanantis Fountain of Neptune and the Renaissance architecture of the surrounding palaces. Luckily, I managed to visit almost all seven attractions except the Fizi Gallery because I didn't book in advance and I didn't want to wait for two hours. I felt a powerful feeling of happiness and contentment. A new day is waiting for me in Florence, full of activities and walks. Um, I wanted to see museums and some extra galleries. It's a nice list, so I had to plan in time uh, to visit all of them to get to see all the attractions. And although I wasn't worried even if I failed in my mission because I'll be back again one day for sure. And next we uh, I will show you some breathtaking hidden places in Tuscany, so see you next week!